and we are live right what's what's this on live this is instagram live 41 now 41 i've done can you believe that um instagram live 41 i don't know which part of the myrmidon we're on but we've done quite a few um in this video we are gonna um drive us the base up uh let me just adjust this camera a little bit there we go right cool so the base earlier on we did mechanicum stand degree right at the beginning of all this um so i've just left that as it is it was undercoated the entire model was undercoated in zandri dust um and i just don't care that some of the zandri dust is showing through it just creates some a little bit of tonal uh tonal variety so i'm all right with that right shake pot paint right here we go dry brushing get it on the palette wang it around a bit now key to dry brushing is to use less than you think you need if you think to yourself all right yeah ready to dry brush you're probably not all right so go more yeah take more paint off still load the brush well it doesn't mean like oh take a little bit of paint and because that won't get you a good dry brush either take a lot of paint so it gets all in the brush yeah but take more off so it's, it's more in the fibers and all that business. So here we go. There we go. Nice circular motion. Do I care if I catch any parts of the ogroid? No. Why? Because we're doing a casual job. I don't try to impress anybody um, or win a demon. I am just here trying to have a bit of hobby fun. I'm not going to judge anything. I mean, I'll make adjustments as I, as I, as I make adjustments, but this 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 is no pressure, no pressure moggling. I'm gonna moggle me moggle just to make me happy, not to make me saddy. Because I mean, the amount of people that actually uh, engage in the painting part of the hobby and just seems to only upset themselves, whether it be because. Uh, of a painting competition or because oh, I can't, oh that technique doesn't work for me that pesky pesky technique laughing at me because I didn't practice it enough I'll blame the technique <laughs> yeah so no pressure man if we if we make mistakes so what so what notice I've started going on a little bit heavier now with the uh, with the dry brush, with the dry brush, my paint is less dry. That's because I'm I'm starting to understand now how how, how administratum grey behaves during dry brushing with this brush in these situations. And so can you see that I've layered up the uh, the dry brushing stage on this? I mean, lots of thin layers. It's not a one shot one kill jobby yeah i've been subtle i don't I, you know i don't want this i don't want this dry brush too strong but at the same time i don't want it too weak yeah man so that'll do let's get this little rock thing he stood on do i care if i catch his hooves no by the way um the hooves are done in exactly the same way as his um webbing webbing these leathery straps are done you know it's just because that's just made your lines going like this where so his hooves are just made your lines you know it's the same colors blah 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 and that's that okay let's get rid of that let's go a little bit lighter let's see what comments have come through as well you've been enjoying allowing mistakes happen on your current project you get some very happy accidents along the way yeah that's right nice one councillor 13 i'm glad you're doing that uh war griffin says what do i think about the artist opus dry brushes should you use a round brush like they claim you should 
So the Artis Opus method of dry brushing is not the same kind of dry brushing. So um, that's more what I would call a damp massage. It's a different method with different objectives and different reasonings. Um, so the, the question is, is, is there any truth to the names? Yeah, so you think about old Shakespeare a rose by any other name would smell just as sweet well it doesn't matter what you call something you know it is what it is and these two things are different what I'm doing now is different to what the artist opus brushes are intended for um, I've got my artist opus brush down there that Byron gave me when um, in fact before they came out um, um, I've not needed to use it on a project yet but I am kind of dying to I just haven't done you know but I was also thinking about getting Byron on live here and it can show us all at the same time that'd be a lovely a lovely lovely time um but uh yeah it's it, it's some of that i call massaging more than i call it brushing so bear that in mind okay moving on there you go so same again don't ever wash your brush between dry brushing colors by the way Unless you, it's a real different colour, um, then use a separate brush. You don't want a wet, you dry brush. At least not for this method. Okay, and again, we'll go a nice and light. Light in touch, because I don't want to make a strong impact on this thing so far. In fact, I'll show you what I don't want to do. All right, I don't want any of these colours to to look strong. I'm gonna put a, I'll put some static grass over this. Um, this deliberate mistake. Right, if any of my dry brushing starts to look quite bright and strong like that, then I've gone too much. Yeah, I always want it to look subtle and dry and grainy. Yeah, you can definitely over dry brush certain things. There we go. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Happy with that. Right, um, do I want to do a bit more? Yeah, notice that I don't dry brush just left and right as well. I do all directions, I do circles, I do left and right. So I stab a little bit, I, you know, I massage and just, yeah, do all, all types. And that gets you nice, even, uniform, eye-catching, eye-pleasing finish. Yeah, well. Cool. Right, okay. This is a bit I might regret. Dun dun dun. Static grass. Um, why might I regret it? Why? Because static grass just gets in everything. Blah blah blah. Now, for sticking static grass on, I use plastic glue. And it basically goes like this get your glue. Wait for it to come out the hole. Come out the old glue sometime today. There we go. Bang a blob of glue on. Make sure the glue stays in a globe and doesn't flatten out. Alright, and just get it in. You start grass. In fact, there we go. Get it in, you start grass. Yeah? Why do you want your glue to stay in a globe? Because that's what will keep you your grass in a nice globey shape. You know, sometimes I'll bang him in and just wiggle him around, but I can't do that. His pot's too small. Yeah, to submerge him in fully. Now, that was a demo. I wouldn't do a stump, a, a clump of grass at a time. Look at that. Stood up just nicely. No exothermic reactions needed. No weird static grass things needed. Yeah. You know, like these weird electro things. Here's another good piece of advice. Never do even numbers of particular types of objects on your base. So if I did four static grasses on this base, probably look a bit naff. 
contrived stick with odd numbers three is a magic number believe it or not oh, don't tell me I'm running out of plastic glue when there's nowhere to buy any send me plastic glue everyone one two oh where should I put this last one it's got to go here and it right in there right, okay so yeah I'll do all these ones at the front I'll do a couple around the back Just leave it all to soak for a second. Here we are, it's all on my fingers. Nah. It's why normally I'll use a tub big enough for me to just wiggle him in and submerge and not get it on my hands. It's when it gets on your palette, that's when it becomes a real bitch. Because then it gets in your paint and blah, blah, blah. Right, giant tip here. Notice I flick the base. I do not blow static grass, ever. Oops, steady on Mr. Camera. I never, ever, ever, never blow static grass. You know, all the years I worked in Games Workshop, you watch kids go like this, and the big cloud of green goes up, it goes in the mouth, up the nose, in their eyes. You know, it's kind of hilarious, but at the same time, it's really not nice. Now, if I do have to blow, look, see some of the grass is stuck there, I'm going to go bend all the way out of the way and blow away from my palette blow away from the pot of static grass yeah strangely this is the bit where the model starting to come to life now that's a key lesson in miniature painting the most important parts of the model bases and faces and if it's got a banner then the banner right oops There we go. There we go. Lovely. Let's just put him down. Let's get the lid on this glue. Might do more in a second. We'll see how it looks. The front of the base kind of look a little bit. Looks a little bit... Uh, Too barren. Yeah, that's alright. Uh, I put a little one there, a little one up the front here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, one at the side here. Only a little one. Don't need to be a big one. One and then just a little one just there to keep those numbers. Oh, I might break my own rule here. Gut feeling he's telling me to do a small one there. May regret this. I may regret it. He says with his no pressure video. <laughs> Man, it's been young since I've used static grass. Right, while well, that's in there soaking. Notice I don't pat it down and flatten that glue, by the way. Let's see what people are saying on the old thing. Okay, Council 13 says, I've got a small foundation makeup brush that I use for dry brushing. Two quid from Amazon. It's mint. Yep, I mean, originally Byron, who created that dry brush for artist opus, blah, blah, blah. And that's, he used to use old makeup brushes. Um, what are my thoughts on different paint brands, Vallejo versus it? Uh, I mean, they've all got different properties that cannot be judged bad or good. They can only be judged, are they good for a particular purpose or getting particular effects? Um, and every paint will be ideal for some kind of purpose and some kind of effect. Um, if you judge them based on what you can do with them at your skill level, then you're going to miss out. Don't don't judge things bad or good. Yeah, I'll give you a great example. Is the difference between... Um, Army Paint and Matte Black and um, Games Workshops, Abaddon Black, completely different. Some might say Abaddon Black is no good, but it's got properties that make it excellent for some things, and this has properties that make it excellent for other things. Um, so, I think in terms of properties, not good, bad, versus or otherwise, all paints work together to, to help you create great art. And if you're saying... Um, you're going to avoid some for whatever reason then 
I'm going to be missing out. What do we reckon? What do we reckon? Quite like that. I almost want one right in there, but I'm not going to do it. I'm happy with that. Lean away to blast. Never blow in there. Let's get the lid on this thing. And uh, we got to leave this to dry now. So, yeah, quick video that one for you guys. Um, any questions, leave me a comment on this video. Remember that if you are watching this video on YouTube and you want to know why I'm talking randomly to people, I keep a camera there live so you can always ask me questions when I work on these projects. That's on Instagram. There should be a link below to Instagram to do any of that. Um, this supporting my channel and all that business um, on Patreon. There's links below. There's also links in any of my YouTube videos to the brushes I like to use and also brushes some of my favourite painters also like to use, which it breaks down into um, two categories. Element Games brushes, the character and regiment brushes, bang for your buck, I find they're the ones that I like the most, you know, and then there's the artist opus brushes that like uh, Richard Gray and David Soper use. Um, other, br other brands I like to use are Broken Toad and Windsor Newton. Um, but the, uh, they can be a little bit harder to get hold of, but definitely look out for Broken Toad ones. Um, so yeah, there you go. All right, guys. Cool. Um, look forward to me next class which I'll do next month. And also, leave a comment in this video if you want to win this guy. Um, I keep waffling on about him, but I'm surprised that uh, there's still so few comments. So, everyone's got a pretty fair chance of winning this fella. It's my two-hour paint job. Two hours, man. Two hours. So, yeah, leave a comment, like, subscribe the video, um, and then I'll pick from the people that... Uh, um, uh, subscribers, likers and commenters so yeah, alright dudes have fun, see you in the next